he's going to go curl up right there. Oh, boo, boo. Oh, <laughs> he, he, oh look at that. <laughs> you could buy a better shot than this. Do things that make you smile. Everybody has a story. Hi, I'm Monique Manon. Now, tell me your story. Never ever let life hold you down. Tell me your story. Don't worry, be happy now. Hi there, welcome to Tell Me Your Story with Monique Manon. I am so excited and honored to introduce you to my next guest, Julie McDonald, who is a pioneer in dance agency. She represented the who is who in from dancers to choreographers, directors now. She expanded her, her business and I can't wait for you to hear all about her journey and who is Julie McDonald. Welcome, Julie. Oh, thank you, Monique. I'm so happy I'm, I'm, to be is, with you. This is like bittersweet. You guys, you don't understand. <laughs> this woman, I was doing a chorus line. Half the cast was telling me, the half the cast was from Los Angeles, and they were telling me, oh my goodness, you got to meet Julie McDonald. She's a dance agent, first dance agent ever. And I'm like, okay. I called you. She picked me up from the airport. I stayed at your house for a couple of nights until I found a place to stay. And the rest, and all my gigs, all my dance gigs, you guys, boom, Julie McDonald. Okay, well, let me, <laughs> let me just say that it wasn't that hard to get you work. You were an exquisite dancer. Oh, thank you. No, you were. You worked all the time. I mean, not because of me, because of you. So your talent was Mm, you were a remarkable dancer. But it also took you to believe in me yeah. and then yeah. so to fight for me because you fought your butt off for us. You did. Oh, thanks. And I love you for that. I'm Thank really, you, Monique. Thank and you. I really want you guys to know this is who got me all my gigs. And uh -huh. this, this woman who fought for, for me and for other dancers I as gave well. her the auditions and um, submitted her, but she got the gigs herself. <laughs> Stop. Agents can't get the jobs for you, but they can. Give you the opportunities. Yes, and you got me a lot, so yeah. thank you for well, that. Well, my total pleasure yeah. working with you. Thank you, darling. Yeah, you were a great client. So I'm just in awe because here you are. Where? Let's get from the beginning. Where, where, where are you from? You, I'm from Bellevue, Washington. Okay. But I moved to Los Angeles in, when I was 15 okay. with my parents. And I went to high school here in the Valley, Grant High. Okay. And I was a, a trained ballet dancer. So when I moved to California, I kept up my training. And then I started taking some modern dance. Mm -hmm. And I um, ended up going on the road with a small dance company touring the United States. And we went to Hawaii. And I, and, um, I did that until I was about early 20s. And then myself and two other women started... Um, a dance studio in Venice uh, called Room to Move. It was an extraordinary Love experience. The name. Yeah. Love the name. And that was from 1976 to 1982. Right. And that was a remarkable place. It was a time and a place uh, that could never be duplicated. Wow. And then... Can you mention, like, who was part of that group? Oh, well, some I of my first clients were part of that group. Yeah. Russell Clark, who I represented for... Well, I worked with a couple times. <laughs> many, 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 many years until he passed away. Yes. Rest his beautiful soul. Yes. And um, Billy Goodson. Yes. And Miranda Garrison. And... Sarah. Sarah, Sarah Elgart. Elgart. Yes. And the moms. Oh. So a, a lot of those people came with me when I first... They all came with me when I first opened the agency. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so that was in 1985. So I spent three years kind of wandering around, figuring out what I was going to do with my life. I was teaching dance, various studios. Mm -hmm. 
I was doing a lot of part-time jobs just to make ends meet. I mean, everything from plant babysitting to working for my... Plant babysitting. <laughs> watering people's plants. And working for my dad in his showroom and working in one of my best friend's um, factory. She was a clothing designer and they were all hand-painted clothes. So it was hand-painting clothes. Right. So I was doing a lot of different things. And um, I got a job dancing in a commercial and I busted my knee and... I was getting older already, and I was really uh, kind of at the end of my rope with not knowing what to do. So then what made the transition? So here you are, a dancer, a teacher, open up a dance studio, and what, what, what was that calling? Like, well, you know I didn't, I, 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 I didn't, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I heard about this um, uh, platform, not platform, mm, that word wasn't even in the lexicon then. <laughs> I heard about this uh, um intensive program called Impact. Mm -hmm. And it was for people who thought they wanted to be in the entertainment business, but they didn't quite know what they wanted to do there. Mm -hmm. So I borrowed $3,000 from my mom. That was a lot of, it's then, still a lot of money. 30 years ago, 30 some years ago. Yeah, that was more yeah, than 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah, and I said, I don't know what I want to do, but I have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I did this three-week boot camp where it started at 5 a.m. and ended at 8 a.m. And if you were a minute late, the doors were locked. So eight, it, 5 to 8 a.m., 5 to 8 p.m.? 5 to 8 a.m. What? Because you had to spend your day going after your goal. So the first week was defining what you wanted to do. And I had didn't, I didn't really know anything about the entertainment business. I was like a classically trained dancer. I didn't audition for jobs or anything. Right. My friends did. Right. In fact, one of my teachers, Victoria Morris, she was at Room to Move, too. And she, she, was, one of the she was my first assistant. Yes. Anyway, so I said, well, I'm either going to be a manager, a casting director, or an agent for dancers. So after the first week, I had narrowed it down to being an agent. Right. So the second two weeks were about getting your goal. And I probably auditioned, auditioned, I interviewed with, I don't know, 10 or 20 different agencies, and they all said the same thing to me. Yeah, we'll give you a desk and a phone and take 50% of everything you make, and Ouch. there's no salary. I kept going to different agencies hoping somebody would pay me a salary, and uh, they didn't. They all offered me the same deal, so then I finally, there was a girl in my impact mm -hmm. um, intensive her name is Terry Hanauer, and she said, I'll introduce you to my agent. So she introduced me to Sandy Joseph at Joseph Just Held Fund and Ricks. Mm -hmm. And it was one of the top, top commercial agencies mm -hmm. in the entire business. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, if everyone's going to offer me the same deal, I might as well go to the best agency I can find. Right. So I ended up there. But I love that story that you told, uh, there's one agent that told you like... Oh, oh, I interviewed with, I think it was a model, my roommate at the time was a model, and she introduced me to her modeling agency, I think it was Nina Blanchard, and she looks at me and she's smoking, she goes, honey, you'll never make a red nickel on dances. What? <laughs> I know. So right. anyway, um, I didn't let that stop me. I thought it was funny. Cause yeah, but that was also the time when oh. people didn't have respect for dancers. Well, they didn't understand. Yeah, they, no, you know, it's, right. it's a whole new time now. Now, now dancers are hot. And dancers right. are, you know, influential now. Right. You know, the influencers now. <laughs> exactly. You know, and exactly. that was a different time in, in back then. It's yeah. like, you know, it's like I remember um, I did a dance job and I, I you could treat it like cattle. Can we have the dancers, please? It was not not by name. It was, you know, you just... Agreed. Well, if you worked... The reason I ended up at a commercial agency, because dancers had union contracts and commercials, yeah. and they had union contracts in television. Yeah. But they didn't have union contracts in film. Right. And they didn't have union contracts anyplace else. Right. So, but I started out at JHR and was there for 15 years. And that's how I built the business. Right. It kept adding more and more departments. It just started out with me. And after I held an audition 
put a teeny little ad in Variety that said wanted dancers for representation and went to Debbie Reynolds and the audition was given by Russell Clark, Jean Castle for tap and Michelle Zeitlin for ballet. What? And Michelle Zeitlin, by the way, taught at Room to Move too. So wow. that she taught, had a children's department there. Wow. She's just the same go-getter that she is today. Right. Remarkable. So... 300 dancers showed up. They were all really good, so I'm pretty sure I signed them oh. all. <laughs> and that's how I started. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, I, and But you have to share the journey because it was not just I started because you had to do a lot of writing. I remember you were telling me that one day that you did a lot of writing. Well, there was no, there was no email. Right. There was nothing. There was, <laughs> there was the telephone right. and letters. Right. And really what I did was I started picking up the phone and using the connections that JHR offered in casting mm-hmm. and with casting directors and started just letting them know and then sending out my um, package. Package. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't really have a package then, but just letting people know that next time they were casting dancers to call me. And then I started, I wasn't even representing choreographers in the beginning. Right. So, but I started calling up every choreographer in town, and some people were really nice, and some people were really threatened. And so, you know, it wasn't that easy. It took a long time before I got my first break, which was Greg Smith decided to give me a chance when he was casting um, a Olivia Newton-John music video, Let's Get Physical, for, for, for <laughs> Kenny Ortega. Right. So that was the first thing that I was allowed to send dancers on. And of course, I did really well. I know dancers. That's right. one thing I know. Right, right. I know talent. Right. I can spot talent. Right. You can smell I, it. I, I, have, I have really good, I can see it. I, can, I, I have good in, intuitions there. And, and I can just see it when someone walks in a room sometimes. Right, right. So I did really well there. Um, uh, I remember one of my first jobs was Jeffrey Hornaday. Who oh, loved? Jeffrey. Did you not love Jeffrey? Yeah, oh. he called me for Captain EO um, that he was doing. Um, it was a Michael Jackson project up at Universal. I think I moved to LA just too late, just because I had done course line with him. Oh. That's how I met Jeffrey. Oh. That's how. Oh. Well, that was just I all before me yes. course line, right? Yes. So Jeffrey Hornaday probably hired like half of my clients yeah. for that project because he loves dancers. He loves dancers. Yeah. Yes. So, so these are the early jobs that I remember. Sarah Elgart, before I was even at the agency, and I was kind of just trying it out at home. Mm-hmm. I she called me. She was doing some. She did a lot of music videos for David Hogan, the director. Right. And there was some. And I was representing Sharon and Karen Owens. I remember the twins. You know, the twins. <laughs> yeah. So that was a first job too. But I wasn't even in an office then. Right, right. After I after I got to JHR, they gave me they didn't give me an office. They gave me a, a, a desk half the size of this <laughs> and a phone, a cubicle. <laughs> and um, I spent one day listening to the commercial agents in their office, and I just said, "I can I I can do this." Right. And then you know started. Started and banging on a lot of doors, a lot of rejection. I didn't make a nickel until three months later. Joey Toledo ca- got cast in a, a Coca Cola commercial. Oh. <laughs> Residual checks. Yeah, those were good. Yeah, those are still good, yes. but they're not as many as they used to be. Right, right. There's the yeah, good old days. The good old days <laughs> in the eighties and nineties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. And so. Uh, so for me, uh, you also are on the board of different... For- Can you talk, talk about that, on the boards that you're part of? Well, um, I'm on the board of the American Dance Movement, which is a, um, an organization started by Nigel Lithgow and Adam Shankman. Mm-hmm. And um, the mission there is to promote dance as a way to enhance everyone's health. So it's tied to health. It's not necessarily tied to performing arts or professionals. It's, it's tied to them health healthy. for everybody. Yes. So they, there's a connection with American Heart Association through that organization. Nice. And um, it's it's and also we give scholarships to various 
um, dance organizations that apply for scholarships, mm -hmm. um, a lot of underserved communities and, and things like that. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, and then um, I am an advisor on Dance Magazine, mm -hmm. and they uh, call me every now and then. They ask me to comment on this, that, and the other thing. Right. And yeah. then you also at the Music Center. Yes, a little yeah, bit on the Music, music Center, center. too, yeah, yeah. Uh, California Dance Association. That's awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then you, you also got honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award by the Chore I have to write it down because I didn't want to miss a beat. By the, by the Choreographers Carnival and Dance Under the Stars Choreography Festival yeah. for pioneering the re representation of dancers and choreographers. Right. How was that moment? Well, Carnival, if you've never been, Carnival is kind of wild. It's... Just, it's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dancers. It doesn't start till 11 o'clock at night. And so by the time they honor their honoree, it's like 12 or midnight. midnight. <laughs> and, you know, and dancers are feeling pretty good by that time. Right. So you get this really nice honor. They do, uh, you know, show a, a video, like this was all testimonials. Right. But not that many people are paying attention. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're like, girl, yay, yay. Paula Abdul gave me my award. Oh, I yeah. love her. Yeah. yeah, so that was really nice. Paula was one of my very first clients. Right. Yeah. Worked with her a couple times. Thank uh, you very much. I bet you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when she, in her early days, as a we started at the same time, essentially. Yeah. And in her early days she as a choreographer. She also loves Dancers. She loves dance and she loves dancers. Yes. She is a dancer. And she has a great eye. She does. Yeah. Without yeah, a doubt. Does. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Well, she does have a great eye. She hired you. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but she chose you to be represented uh, as yeah, well. she did. Yeah. So. I, mean, I, mean, I, was, I was looking. There wasn't a lot of choice. I did get competition uh, starting in 1987, which I was really grateful for, actually, right. because it legitimized yes. what I was doing. Right. You were either with me or you didn't have an agent. Right. And, I and couldn't. she was like the happy oh, half choreographer oh, then. She was. Paula was. But yes. I'm just saying that yes. when competition came in in 1987, that gave me a run for my money, right. for sure. Right. Um, because there was a lot of people that opening up dance agencies as well, right? Well, the competition was one dance agency. It was Bobby Ball. Ball, right. But, yeah. And, and they were like, oh, she's making all the money. Let's go dip in that pool, Well, too. Yeah. yeah. And then after that, there's like five or six now. Yeah, now. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was at Debbie Reynolds, I was rehearsing. I don't remember what I was rehearsing for. And Paula was rehearsing for her music video or something. She was rehearsing for some gig because she's always working. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Monique, Monique, listen to my song. And that was her, her first album. Aww. She was so excited. She was so excited uh -oh. to, to, to share that. Well, and those first, that oh, first album was, was brilliant. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then um, 2020 either revealed or exposed who you are. What did 2020 do for you? Well, 2020 was really interesting. I mean, we all vacated our office on March 12th, like everybody else, and decided we were going to work from home. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say the first month, people weren't really working that much. <laughs> but starting in April... My agency, we were on it. We worked. We kept in touch with our clients. Mm -hmm. We made sure, did our best to make sure that they were okay. A lot of them had moved home with their parents right. or, you know, moved to where? Wherever they, wherever they could. Yes. And, um, but we worked. We stayed in touch. We had meetings every week. And what happened was prior to that time, my New York office was, we didn't have a lot of connection to the, to the New York office, but we decided to have meetings with everybody. So we got real close connect, to the connected to, yes. to the New York, the people in the New York office and the LA office, and we got really close and got to know each other. And got on the same page. And we got on the same page. And, you know, listen, we were in a lot of business, but there was some. And people, and we worked. It wasn't like we were doing nothing. Right. And, and, what I did was, I walked a lot. I, and I got in my car and I drove when no one was out in the road. Right. And it was like the twilight zone right. here. Just to go exhale. Just to go and, and drive and see how beautiful everything was when right. there wasn't all this traffic. Right. 
and I did a lot of walking um, in neighborhoods I hadn't been in before. I had a friend, and we, and, and in fact, I started taking pictures of mm-hmm. new neighborhoods of gates, and I got fascinated by gates. gates? <laughs> I, and I'm doing a gate book. Oh, nice. Yeah. Doors yeah. are nice, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, see? Nice. So I just, yeah, so, I mean, I, I would just be walking and driving when there was nobody on the road. I would just drive just to drive. There was no right. place to go. Because before, you would drive just to get from A to B, and you're really not taking in what's going on. Right. Around you. Well, I would so just you get really in the car because I, in. yeah, and I couldn't really sit here. I just, there's no way I could yeah. do that. And I just have to be outside. Right. Even our pool was closed in the building. Wow. It reopened in the summer with very strict rules, but yeah. it was closed. For, so it was, it was interesting. I cooked a lot. Is that a, was that a new thing? No, I've always liked to cook. But, what, but I cook a lot. Girl? Are you the takeout girl? Not too much. I became one after about three or four months of cooking. <laughs> I finally went enough. <laughs> I got it. I got. I got. I got. I got to start ordering. But you know, I, I cooked. Nice. I mean, I cooked. I walked. I, I. I didn't mind the whole experience. Yeah, me either. I just didn't mind the whole darn thing, you know. Yeah. And um, it just really, for me, it, 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 it really made me go in major gratitude. I was always grateful, but that really made you gratitude. Yeah, me too. I mean, in the sense of, of course, I was home and watched a lot of news and mm-hmm. um, just became really grateful for my health. Yeah. I know you're really into health. Oh, so. you know I am. I know. Yeah, you know I'm so. Pa- I'm, that's my passion and yeah, purpose. Yeah. Who are like some of the clients that you have that they might know and they might? Uh, Kenny Ortega, Vincent Patterson, yes. Jamie King, mm-hmm. big names. Marguerite Derricks. Kenny Ortega, High School Musical, Michael Jackson. Uh, um, um, uh, Vince Patterson, Michael Jackson, Madonna. <laughs> Madonna. Uh, so this is some big gift. Tell me your story. Never ever let life hold you down. Tell me your story. Don't worry, be happy down upside down. After working over 30 years in Hollywood, working with Prince on the music video Kiss. Eddie Murphy on Coming to America, Will Smith on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Paul Abdul, to name a few. I realized, you know, they got inspired by somebody. I would love to hear their story, right? And then I realized that dancers, dancers were going into depression because they didn't know what to do life after dance. So that's when I wanted to put some sunlight on them and also be a, a teaching tool for the baby dancers out there, but also let them know, like, these are the dancers that paved the way for you, right? And then I was dealing with out of control eczema. It took me three years to find a healthy solution, and I became a health advocate. Getting testimonials coming in, I realized that everybody has a story. And that's how I created the show, Tell Me Your Story with Monique Manon. What is your story? I would love to hear it, because everybody has a story. Everybody, I'm Julie McDonald, and I'm on Tell Me Your Story with Monique Manon. I hope you all tune in and remember to do things that make you smile. But um, uh, you know, just to for fun, like who you know, just name it for them. Who are like some of the clients that you have that they might know and they might? Well. Um, Here's some of my clients that I've represented for like over 25 years. Okay. I think that they deserve a mention for their loyalty. Right. And uh, Kenny Ortega, Vincent Patterson, yes. Jamie King, mm-hmm. those are big names. Marguerite Derricks. Okay, I got to say something about that. Kenny Ortega, High School Musical, Michael Jackson, 
um, uh, Fitz Patterson, Michael Jackson, Madonna. <laughs> Madonna. Uh, so this is some big gigs here. Yeah, Janet right? King, Madonna, and any uh, just big credits. Yes, you know? yes. And Marguerite Derrick's Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and um, oh my all the Austin Powers movies, right. and yeah, she, she represented some powerhouses, you guys, and still is representing yeah. some powerhouses. Um, just some really. I mean, I'll just stick with those. You have a lot of choreographers, and so you think you can dance for choreographing. We had a lot of people on, so you think you can dance. Can I tell you how much I love that? And that show was so great. Can I, I wish it would you? come back. I remember this one moment, and I, uh, um, Nigel stopped the show because Desmond Richardson was in audience. Oh, I represent Desmond Richardson. I love him. He's going to be a guest. He's going to be a guest. Is I'm he? so excited. Yes. Oh, he's, he's my client. Yes, I love him. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, so he stopped. So you think you can dance finals so he can introduce the world to Desmond Richardson. I mean, of course, people in the dance world know Desmond Richardson, and that's one of the reasons why I'm doing this show because I really feel like Everybody needs to know Julie McDonald, Desmond Richardson, and so that's exactly why. And I was so excited that he did that. He was like, you guys, you don't know. This guy is an amazing dancer. He's a phenomenal dancer. And, well, that's and they the don't brilliance do that of, that's for the, dancers. They, that's so, the brilliance of that show, yes. and that's the brilliance of, why, of, of Nigel. This is why that show was so good, because it was produced by dancers. Yes. I mean, Nigel... Just the respect that you yes, saw there. Yes, the way he would introduce oh. all the choreographers. Yes. I mean, lots of shows, they don't do that. Yeah. They just think that dance makes and itself up, but he, the choreographers were the stars of that right. show. They start getting Emmy they were nominations. Oh, Come they, on. No, no, there's huge stars that, are, that came out of the shows. Uh, oh. Tabitha and Napoleon, who yes, we represent. Yes, I love them, yeah. So there's a lot of stars that came out of that yeah. show. Right now, I would just have to say some of the clients, my biggest clients now, are Jamal Sims. He Lovely. choreographed the movie Aladdin uh-huh. um, and does everything with RuPaul. Mm-hmm. Um, we represent Chloe Arnold from Syncopated Ladies. Mm-hmm. Um, she's working a lot. Right. Um, with some wonderful younger, younger new clients yeah. like um, Megan Lawson, who I adore. Right. Um, I'm sure my daughter will know. Sean Liu. <laughs> Who, I mean, these are all, you can find them all on oh, Instagram awesome. and stuff like that, you know. This is the real deal, you guys. She's the real deal. Thank ah, you. I'm sorry. Any advice that you have for uh, upcoming dancers, choreographers, or savvy businesswoman like yourself, for people that are like, oh, I would love to own an, some kind of agency, some kind of representation that I would like to be part of? Any advice? Well, uh, uh, I would say that if you want to go into the representation business, you have to pick a field that you know really, really, really well. And passionate and about. I, I was going to say, and have a big passion for. I mean, y- you know, everybody has agents now. Whoever thought that chefs would have representation? Right. But they do because somebody said, I'm going to represent chefs. Right. So if you want to go into management or agenting, you just have to... Find one thing that you're passionate about or one person that you're passionate about. Or pioneer like you did. Find a, find a niche that hasn't has that covered yet. Yeah, right? yeah. I, if there are that, I think there probably are. Yeah. I mean, so it's all about how much you love something, how much, because it takes a huge amount of effort and work. And stick to it. Sacrifices. And sacrifice. And you just have to know that you just have to persevere through thick and thin. It has not been all an easy ride, believe me. It's been, I mean, I have weathered five different agencies opening up, losing clients, Mm -hmm. and through it all, I just have decided, you know, things are going to be okay because I'm just going to stick to what I do. To what I do best. That's right. And and it's, it's you know your lane, and it's always paid off right. um, through some of the most adverse times, and including the pandemic, where things are we're really busy now and yeah, excited about the future. Uh-huh. And for dancers that possibly want to contact you, what is the advice? How to contact you? Well, we have a website, okay, which is uh, msa. dot com. We'll put the link. No, yeah. no worries. You can put the link yeah. on it, and there is a place on that website where you can um, submit. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. 
any advice for them? Uh, you know, because there's a lot of dancers out there. This is just my opinion, right? There's a lot of dancers that technically are brilliant. So if you're technically brilliant, start working on also your performance level because that is the money shot. She knows because she was That's a great the performer. That's the money shot. <laughs> she was a great performer. I mean, yeah. I, I, there, there's certain choreographers who go just for technique yeah. or certain jobs require that. Right. But in the entertainment business, they are going for stars, people who shine. Yeah. And this is why you have to love it because it's not worth doing unless right. you love it. So, right. yes, you have to work on your performance and who cares how perfect you do something in audition. You've got to find a way to... Stand out. Stand exactly. You do. And the and and the easy one to do that is truly love. Because if you love it, the person that's watching it is gonna love it as well, right? Because they're gonna be like, Oh, look at the, right. look at the joy. When you're auditioning, the people who you're auditioning for, they want you to be it. They'd like to go home. Right. So they're looking for people. they don't wanna sit there all day looking right. for that those few people that shine. Right. It can be you. That's right. That's it. That's it. Oh, I love it. I love it. What makes you smile? Well, I'm having a really good time right now. I, know. I was going to say that, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, pursue, you know, you know. I'm having a really good time right now. I know. I love my puppy, and I'm going to a Dodger game tonight. Oh, you I'm love, a, you love, the, you love I, baseball? I love baseball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love the Dodgers, so. Oh. Yeah. In fact... I have a whole project that I want to do about baseball and ballet. There's so many similarities when you look at some of the physical mm -hmm. movement. Right. Well, there's a lot of athletes that will hire dance teachers, yoga teachers, Pilates teachers because movement. Yeah. I remember that football player. I, mean, I don't know. Lynn like Swan. Football. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> He's the only one that everybody knows, but yeah. I'm sure other people. But have no, taken... no, but it's, I forgot his name, but I love him because he he moves like a gazelle, and it's he's a big, big dude. My, uh, my son is gonna kill me. Wasn't it Lynn Swan? No, it was. Oh, so there's another one. Oh yeah, that moves like a gazelle. Oh, I would love to know who it is. I know. I will. I will. Go, I'm gonna mention that name in the comments. I promise. Because I just love the way he moves. So that makes me notice him. And, and well, I'm football players, you know, they're the ones on Dancing with the Stars. And they have very good footwork, as yes, you know. Yes, I don't know. Baseball players, I don't know about them. They're, they're graceful, but I see the grace and the beauty in right. what they do. Right, because they're athletes. Yeah. And yeah. dancers finally got the honor of being called Athlete. And hip-hop dance is now an Olympic sport starting next in... Stop it. In two years, yeah, or four years, 28. Really? 28, yeah. Is there anything secretly that you have fought for that we didn't know? Please oh, yeah. share. Oh, yeah. Please no, no, share. No, 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 no. The biggest fight is uh, uh, representation for choreographers in film and television, um, and primarily film and television, music videos and commercial, all media. They do not have a guild or a union. I'm so glad you brought it up um, because I remember when we talked last time, you were mentioning it because she's absolutely right. Because when we do when we do a commercial or whatever, we get residual checks, but they were not getting that, were right. they? Not unless they put themselves on camera. Oh no, no, no! It's not just it's just it's commercials are just a small part of it. So but film and so, so the Michael Jackson so we videos have, go to eternity and they don't get residual checks for that. They get nothing, and not only that. That's the biggest crime right and, now. Well, one of them. No, it's terrible. It's so terrible. It is terrible because if you can imagine creating the movement for Smooth Criminal or Beat It, and that is, you can use, anybody can use that. There's no, they have no legal rights to, they do not own their work. Did you, were you able to get a solution for that? No. First of all, there is a solution. I mean, choreographers who work on the stage, they have a union, and it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. they, they own their work. So right now, at this particular time in history, I would say for the first time since the late 80s when we did make a real concerted effort, the SDC came out to, to uh, L.A. to try to unionize. The S SDC is the union in New York that represents stage choreographers, right. directors and choreographers. They came out. It got, they got the whole community riled up. Every, people joined, and then the whole thing fizzled because... It didn't get recognized by the producers. So at this exact moment, there's a lot of movement about forming a guild. 
So I'm Wonderful. really excited so, about that. So the choreographers and directors are protected. Not the directors. Directors have plenty of protection. Yes. The choreographers. Okay. The DGA is not interested in taking them. SAG. You can get a choreographer can get a SAG. Uh, contract for a feature film where they'll get their pension and health paid, but there's no other, uh, there's no uh, residuals, there's no credit provisions, there's nothing. Oh, wow. But they can at least get their pension and health through a SAG contract. But we are, we, yes, we are working on forming a guild like the other crafts guilds, like right. the costumers, like the cinematographers, right, like right. the art like directors. Like music writing, the music. Well, they've got, they've got their... They, they have they, theirs. They have theirs. Yeah, yeah, because so. I would love to use, my, for my theme song, This Is Me, from, mm -hmm. from The Greatest Showman, mm -hmm. I love that song because to me, it says it all because this is me, this is you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you came from being a dancer, 15, worked your way up, and now you have embodied this all, and now you can say, this is me. This is me. That's right, right? And But because it's too expensive, the song is too expensive because you have to pay lo royalties. Right, right. And that's what the choreographers need. They need to get their royalties. Well, they need to get their royalties, but I, find, I think that's going to be the hardest thing to get because nobody gets royalties. And none of these guilds get royalties. The customers don't get royalties. Uh, Nobody gets royalties. But they, there are other things that, that, that they, they can get. We can set, we can set um, minimum wage. Mm -hmm. We can set overtime. Mm -hmm. We can set requirements for assistance. We can set usage of work. So basically, if you use the work in another medium. Mm -hmm. You got it. Pay up. There's a lot of things. There's right. credit provisions. I think it's going to be really difficult to get royalties, but that's what everybody wants, and we'll see what happens. I just know that nobody else uh, gets that. Right. But right. we'll see what happens. This is a little bit of a so different this is craft. Still, this is still going to be your fight. This is the last fight for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. This is the last fight. And a for needed me. one. But a needed well, one. Well, it's it's people. Um, I've seen people weep for what's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the anger, the the, the absolute frustration about peop, people's work being used in another yeah. medium without yeah. any kind of a compensation or acknowledgement. Okay, is there one more thing that you're proud that you achieved? I would have to say, myself, along with the other agents and Dancers Alliance, mm -hmm. was finally getting SAG to cover dancers uh meaning for, for dancers films. have a union for, now for, well they always had a union for television under aftra but not film not film and that was that was a huge, huge. thing so now all the dancers on a sad film that means residual checks guys that's right that means but they it goes into your pension but they don't remember the days when they were treated like Terribly, like, right. like they would help put you guys all in a tent somewhere, yeah. barely feed you, give you, barely, you know, wouldn't take care of you at all because you were treated as extras. Yes. Oh, that was just horrible. So that was major accomplishment. I yes. did not do that alone, yes. but that was major accomplishment. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. That was and so sharing much sharing your baby with me. This, this is Mookie, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then please subscribe, like, hit that bell, and so that way you get notification when the next one is. And remember, do things that make you smile. Tell me story. Never ever let life hold you down. Tell me story. Don't worry, be happy, down, upside, frown. Tell me story. Motivation, inspiration, upliving and giving. Tell me story. Inspiration, motivation, it's your life, so keep living. Never ever let life hold you down. Tell me your story. Don't worry, be happy, down, upside, frown. Tell me your story. Motivation, inspiration, uplifting, and giving. Tell me your story. Inspiration, motivation, it's your life, so keep living. Your